Hey everyone, welcome to the Daily Word. I'm, I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word, we're going to go into Proverbs chapter 4. I'd like to share verse 23 with you, which I really believe is one of the key verses in the book of Proverbs, if not in the scriptures as, as a whole. We read there, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. So first of all, I think good questions we're getting started with this. What is the heart? Now, we've sort of been led to believe that the heart is just really about emotions, uh, desires, and there's something to that, but it's it's actually the reality is quite a, a bit larger than that because what we find in, in the biblical view is that, that the heart is really the center of intention and volition. The heart really uh, determines how we think. It, it's the seed of our passion and devotion. The devotion of uh, our hearts determines what we will think about given situations and what we will give effort to and what our lives will will be about. And so, for instance, when we see a situation where there is, let's say, a temptation, uh, because of the the set of our heart, because of the the desires and intention of our heart, we will will either see there uh, an opportunity to satisfy, to gratify the desires of the flesh, the sinful desires of the flesh, or we will see there an opportunity to glorify God by trusting in Him and demonstrating uh, our devotion. So our heart set will determine how is it that we're looking at this situation? How, how do I want to deal with this temptation? Do I see an opportunity for gratification or do I see, yes, this is a struggle, but my desire in this situation is to take this as an opportunity to demonstrate my love and devotion uh, to God. And, and so what, what we find is that the way our heart is set will, in fact, come out. It will be who we are, demonstrate who we are. So Jesus says in Matthew 15, 16 to 20, don't you understand yet, Jesus asked, anything you eat passes through the stomach and then into the sewer. But the words you speak come from the heart, and that's what defiles you. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. These are what defile you. Eating with unwashed hands will never defile you. And so this, this is our, our heart. It is the, the way our desires, our passions are aligned. It is the center of our desire, volition, intention. And then the next question then after we've looked in at what the heart is, is how do, how do we guard our hearts? What does that, that actually look like? And, and I think it's a real helpful image that Jesus gives us in Matthew 6 and verse 45. He says there, A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. And so the image here is of storing things up within the heart, that the heart is is a treasury, is a storeroom, and what we're putting in will eventually come out. And so the question then is, what are we putting in? What What are we feeding our minds, and therefore, what are we allowing to shape our hearts? What, what is it that we're giving our attention to, our time to? Is our attention on, on the Lord, on how we can serve Him and honor Him and show our del- delight and devotion uh, to Him? What are we feeding our minds? Are we actually feeding on the Word of God daily? And are we actually developing our relationship with the Lord by praying without ceasing? We, we actually do uh, have leadership over our hearts there's this really terrible song. Um, I don't I don't remember when it came out, but it's been out for a long time. And the the song is "Listen to Your Heart." And in addition to just being a, a just a, an incredibly bad song, it is an incredibly bad message. And of course, maybe that's what makes it a bad song. 
Because the, the opposite is actually true. To listen to the heart is to follow the shifting and fickle and most of the time destructive desires of our, our hearts, our unrepentant, uh, unredeemed hearts. That that's, that's really the message behind that. And, and actually the, the opposite is true, that we have leadership over our hearts. If we are, are drawn, we're, we're developing a passion for something that dishonors God, that's going to cause destruction in our life and our relationships, we can actually lead our hearts. We can say, you know, I know that I want this. I know that I feel this. But I'm not going to actually allow this to take root in me and to come to fruition. I, I am actually going to instruct my heart uh, because I have the mind of Christ. I am going to lead my heart with the mind uh, of Christ that is being formed in me by the Lord. And so th this is how we guard our hearts by what we're putting in our hearts and what we're allowing to to remain and, and to grow and develop in our hearts. And then finally, we think then about what it is that we want to have as the course of our lives. This is to live with intentionality, not just to let life happen to us and to always be reacting to everything around us, but to actually live our lives on purpose. Because after all, we were made on purpose by the Lord. He has made us and He is recreating us in Christ Jesus to do good works He has prepared for us in advance to do. And so, we know that we live in a sowing and reaping world. What we sow is what we're going to reap. Therefore, we're thinking carefully about the course that we want our lives to take. Uh, we want, ultimately, a heart that is close to God. Jesus, in Matthew 15, 7 to 9, He's quoting from the book of the prophet Isaiah, and he talks about uh, folks who, who their lips are, are declaring good things about God, but he says their hearts, this is the key part, their hearts are far from him. And so it seems to me that a, a worthy goal for the follower of Christ is to say, my goal is to have a heart that's close to God. My heart being devoted to him. My heart seeing the world, perceiving the world, through the mind uh, of Jesus Christ, from God's perspective, from the perspective of heaven of which I am uh, a citizen. And so if that's the case, then we direct our hearts intentionally to be close to God. We draw close to Him in the Scriptures, draw close to Him in prayer, draw close to Him by decisions that we make to trust Him, to trust His Word. And I would just say one final thing, and that is, friends, don't despair because of the darkness that is in your heart. There is brokenness and darkness in, in each of us. Don't despair of that. Confess it to God. Trust that He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Actually determine, as the Word says, to take those thoughts, that darkness, take it captive, take hold of it, give it your attention, and, and ask the Lord to change you. Don't despair. Trust the power of God. Take it captive in the power of the mighty name of Jesus and declare that it will have no place in your heart. And if it comes back again, take it captive again and, and cast it out uh, by the power uh, of the name of Jesus. Let us not despair of darkness, but shine the light of Christ on that darkness so that our hearts truly are moving closer and closer to the Lord. And may it be so in Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we get a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.